Good evening, everyone. Welcome to St. Mark the Evangelist Parish. Our opening hymn is number 412, In Christ Alone, number 412. Please stand at this time. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. As we gather on this beautiful day, on this weekend celebrating our Lord's resurrection, we gather acknowledging our sins and asking for the Lord's mercy. Lord Jesus, you were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Draw near to your servants, O Lord, and answer their prayers with unceasing kindness, that for those who glory in you as their creator and their guide, you may restore what you have created and keep safe what you have restored. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever.
A reading from the book of Exodus. The whole Israelite community grumbled against Moses and Aaron. The Israelites said to them, Would that we had died at the Lord's hand in the land of Egypt as we sat by our flesh pots, eating our fill of bread. But you led us in this desert to make the whole community die of famine. Then the Lord said to Moses, I will now rain down bread from heaven for you. Each day the people will go out and gather their daily portion. Thus will I test them to see whether they follow my instructions or not. I have heard the grumblings of the Israelites. Tell them in the evening, twilight, you shall eat flesh. And in the morning you shall have your fill of bread, so that you may know that I, the Lord, are your God. In the evening, quail came up and covered the camp. In the morning, a dew lay all about the camp. And when the dew evaporated, there on the surface of the desert were fine flakes like hoarfrost on the ground. On seeing it, the Israelites asked one another, what is this? For they did not know what it was. But Moses told them, this is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. The word of the Lord. Reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians, brothers and sisters, I declare and testify in the Lord that you must no longer live as the Gentiles do. In the futility of their minds, that is not how you learn Christ, assuming that you heard of him and were taught in him, as truth is in Jesus, that you should put away the old self of your former way of life, corrupted through deceitful, deceitful desires, and be renewed in the spirit of your minds, and put on the new self, created in God's way in righteousness and in holiness of truth. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. When the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they themselves got into boats and came to Capernaum looking for Jesus. And when they found him across the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you get here? Jesus answered them and said, Amen, amen, I say to you, you are looking for me not because you saw signs, but because you ate the loaves and were filled. Do not work for food that perishes, but for food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For on him, the Father, God, has set his seal. So they said to him, What can we do to accomplish the works of God? Jesus answered them and said, This is the work of God, that you believe in the one whom he sent. So they said to him, What sign can you do that we may see and believe in you? What can you do? Our ancestors ate manna in the desert, as it is written, He gave them bread from heaven to eat. So Jesus said to them, Amen, amen, I say to you, it was not Moses who gave the bread from heaven. My Father gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God that is, that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. So they said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never hunger, and whoever believes in me will never thirst. The Gospel of the Lord. A few weeks ago, I decided to go down to downtown Nashua and, and get a bite to eat in the evening, and you know, us, us priests eat alone, usually, so I go by myself, and it's wonderful, have a nice meal. Uh, but I love to wear my, uh, I'm sure many of you have seen me, I wear my Toledo Rockets polo shirt sometimes, because I just like to walk around. I'm very proud of being an alumni of, of University of Toledo, and you just never know if you're going to meet somebody else who went to your college. You like to wear that external sign, if you will, of uh, where you went. And so I was sitting there having dinner, and then this young woman uh, walks up to me, excuse me, sir, I went to the University of Toledo too. And I said, wow, like in, in Nashua, that's pretty incredible. And, you know, I, I moved out here right after I graduated, and I, I had a job at BAE Systems, and that's the kind of, that's the reason I'm here is because of BAE, and so you just wonder, like, how did she get here? You know, what is her story, and, and, um, and things like that. But I didn't bother her. I didn't want to look like a creep, so I just, you know, just kept eating my, eating my food. Uh, but then later on, I uh, went up to her, and I said, okay, I'm, I'm not going to bother you, but I just want to know when you graduated and, you know, what your major was. She said, oh, I just graduated in 2016. I graduated in 2005. She was a good 11 years behind me in school, so we wouldn't have known the same people. We wouldn't have, you know, and she was an exercise science or something like that. So anyway, it was just, I was hoping to make a connection of just like reliving the old college days and, you know, the teachers and maybe if we knew the same uh, students that went there and all that. So anyway, it was useless. But anyway, uh, <laughs> I'm very proud of where I went, but, and, and you know, wherever we have graduated from, whatever schools we have graduated from, we have kind of an allegiance to that school because we were proud to have gone there, we have great memories that kind of developed us to be who we are and um, have a lot of gratitude towards that school. But at the end of the day, with the conversation with this young woman, I mean, we could be in a University of Toledo fan club or an alumni association, but that's pretty much it. <laughs> you know, that's, that's pretty much where our connection um, ends. And, I don't live my life, you know, with the identity of, well, I'm just a University of Toledo graduate. You know, that's like reliving your history from, you know, my, the only years of my life that mattered was 2001 to 2005, and that's pretty much it. We always look for a deeper identity and in, into who we are. Now, we've been hearing from the Bread of Life discourse in the last couple of weekends from the Gospel of John, and the Gospel of John is all about signs. Jesus is doing these signs. The very first sign he does in the Gospel of John is turning the, the water into wine at the wedding. The last sign he does in the Gospel of John is the raising of Lazarus from the dead. And of course, his own death and his own resurrection, they would look at that as the, the eighth sign. But the sign that we saw last week was the, the multitude of the loaves and the fishes, the feeding of the 5,000. And he has this group of people that are following him from all over to see these signs because he's some kind of a wonder worker almost like the Jesus fan club. 
And Jesus gets upset because they just still don't get it. They don't understand the reason behind these signs, what the signs are trying to point to. That these signs are only possible because of the love of the Father. The bread that came down from heaven of the, the, in the desert that we heard in the first reading was God giving them food, knowing that they were hungry and needed a fulfillment in that very way. But these signs are breaking through and realizing that Jesus leads us to eternal life, leads us to God the Father, leads us to true love itself, but the disciples just don't get it. So Jesus says, well, they, they even asked Jesus at this time, um, and they said, what can we do to accomplish the works of God? And he says, believe in the one who sent me. And then they ask him again, well, can you give us another sign? He must have just been like beating his head against the wall saying they just don't understand. And Jesus wasn't doing signs to say, well, please, please, please believe in me. You know, at the end of the day, people are going to be making up, uh, hopefully, be formed enough and be transformed enough in their own lives and realize the depth of who Jesus is, to re realizing that Jesus is God and the love of God is shown through, through the works and the signs that Jesus performed. But he talks about the bread of life. He indeed is the bread of life who has come down from heaven and wants to give us eternal life. And we receive that right here at this altar where the bread and wine will be transformed. Now, we don't just leave here saying that we're like, you know, just part of the Jesus fan club and I can't wait for next week so that Father Mike can transform the gifts again because that's so cool. In some way, the Eucharist, the bread of life, becomes our identity. Our identity was started when we were baptized in the baptismal font. We were given the gift of the Holy Spirit and became, became, had the identity of being Christians. And kind of a part of the action of being, being Christian, when we're, true, when we're fully initiated into the church, we receive the Eucharist. Because the Lord has chosen to give himself to us completely so that we can go out and love and service and give ourselves to all those completely and that the, the love of God can work through our actions, can work through our words. Our identity is that we are beloved sons and daughters of God who have been given the greatest gift, the gift of himself in the Eucharist. So it doesn't just stop as, well, we're just come here week and after week as just fans of the church. We like the Catholic Church, we just come here. No, we come here because we have an identity and because he has given us such a great gift that gives us the strength that we need to go out and proclaim the gospel, go out and proclaim his message. So we can get into a little bit deeper of conversations with each other too of, well, when did you graduate and what was your major and what are you doing now? No, how is the church, how is the vehicle of the church being instrumental in your life to uh, transform you to become a better disciple, to become a better disciple of Jesus Christ, not a fan? Jesus is our true identity, and the Eucharist is the greatest gift that we have to give us the strength and the courage to become more like him and transform our lives. And we stand together as one family in faith, and we profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And in trust and confidence, we bring our prayers and petitions to our loving Father. We pray for the church. May the gift of the Eucharist nourish our souls and help us work together to seek the fulfillment of the reign of God, we pray to the Lord. Lord 
for all who exercise authority. May the Holy Spirit guide them in right judgment. We pray to the Lord. Lord For refugees who have fled their homelands for safety, may God grant them relief through the kindness of his people. We pray to the Lord. Lord For the elders of our community, especially those who are isolated, may the Lord grant them perseverance in faith and hope. We pray to the Lord. As we prepare for the upcoming season of creation, may we follow in the footsteps of St. Francis of Assisi, patron patron saint of ecology, and learn to respect creation and care for the earth, we pray to the Lord. And we pray for all who have died, especially for Clarence and Beatrice Pedley, for whom this Mass is offered, that they and all the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace for eternal life, we pray to the Lord. And we pray for all the prayers on our prayer line and for the prayers that we voice in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. We ask all these things through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our offertory hymn is number 356. One Love Release, number 356. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours will be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. And Lord, accept the sacrifice of your name for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his children. Graciously sanctify these gifts, O Lord, we pray, and accepting the oblation of this spiritual sacrifice, make of us eternal offering to you, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God through Christ. For by his birth he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state, and by his suffering canceled out our sins. By his rising from the dead, he has opened the way to eternal life, and by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so, with the company of the angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim.
You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son, present here in our midst when we are gathered by his love. And when as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and he breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he himself took bread into his hands. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving you thanks, he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand. We proclaim the work of your love until he comes again as we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us. And grant that by the power of the spirit of your love that we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. And so having called us all to your table, Lord, confirm us in unity, so that together with Francis, our Pope, Peter, our Bishop, with all of the bishops, priests, deacons, and your entire people, as we walk your ways with faith and hope, we may strive to bring joy and trust into the world. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ, and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face, and in the resurrection give them fullness of life. Grant also to us, when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles and martyrs, with Saint Mark, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you, through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are they who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Our communion hymn is number 333. Eat this bread, number 333.
let us pray. A company with constant protection, O Lord, those you renew with these heavenly gifts. And in your never-failing care for them, make them worthy of eternal redemption. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And we had a wonderful, wonderful week for Vacation Bible School this past week. And I just want to thank uh, all that have participated, uh, from the kids to the crew leaders to, to adult volunteers. It was just an awesome, awesome week, and the kids had a lot of fun. I think between the campers and the high school, middle school crew leaders, we had about 70 kids in all, which was awesome. And then adding the adults onto it, I mean, there's well over 100 people that were involved in this thing for the week, and it was just tons of fun. It was exhausting, but it was fun. Um, so uh, thank you again to all that made that possible. With that being said, uh, the schedule will be returned back to normal uh, this week. So daily Mass is at 9 a.m. again uh, from Monday through Thursday, and adoration, of course, will be on Tuesday from after the 9 o'clock Mass until 3.30 um, in the afternoon. And with that being said, too, since it was such a long week for the staff, um, I, gave, I was nice enough, I gave them two days off. Uh, so the office will be closed Monday and Tuesday. So if you have any uh, office business, just leave B uh, Lisa a voicemail or an email, and she'll be sure to get back to you when uh, she comes back in the office on Wednesday. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless all of you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Please join in our closing hymn, number 442. How can I keep from singing, number 442? Have a wonderful week, everyone, and God bless.